So we move on to round two, game one of the Bristol tournament held on the 11th of October 2014 at the Excelsior Storm. Myself on the left there playing NEH, sorry, and Seb on the right from Oxford playing Andromeda. Some eagle-eyed viewers may recognise Seb from our uh, regionals coverage of Cardiff, uh, where he actually finished top. Uh, of the uh, standings after the rounds of Swiss and uh, went on to do quite well within the tournament itself uh, hence the rather shiny pawn playmat you'll see before you and the acrylic Andes so uh, again it's a, it's a very stiff opponent and uh, it's not necessarily what I would want in the second round but uh, hey I guess it's no, lo no less than I deserve so uh, as a result it's going to be a fiercely competitive game and uh, if I can come out of this with a split I will probably be happy, needless to say. Looks like he's got quite a sensible hand there, with Parasites and a, uh, an Account Siphon in hand. Uh, he's going to keep it, so I will do my mana to draw, and proceed to try and score all the Astros all the time. So I will install... Uh, install... It's like a pop-up window there going on R&D. And I'll sweep, sweep. Oh, you better believe it, ladies and gentlemen. I'll sweep, sweep. Oh, for how many did you think you say? Oh, eight credits, do you say? Oh, my word. Heavens above and earth below. Eight credits. Yes, I will take that. I don't actually think it was an ideal opening hand. I, I think uh, it was okay. But then two pieces of ice in a, uh, a sweep, sweep against Andy. That is exactly what you want to see. Um, so I will take that any day of the week. He'll play the Shaw Gamble, as you do. And he'll play daily casts. So all the economy. Uh, he's pretty much good to go. Uh, just a cave question now of seeing the breakers. Uh, once more, just a reminder, the tokens come from BrokenEggGames.com. Uh, you'll see there the oranges are threes, the blues are twos, and the greens are ones. He'll play a crash space and a fairy for his last two clicks. And uh, I will then pass the turn. So I've got a Jackson Howard, which I'll install, drawing myself a card. And uh, he is ready to go. I'm going to install. I'm getting a remote server set up. And install again. I'm not sure if that's the Astro, whether I'm being a bit of a cheeky blighter and hoping he doesn't have the inside job. Certainly playing it uh, somewhat free and easy. He will pop up window. Uh, he'll run R&D, see a pop up window, no score there. He will run HQ. And he'll see an Enigma, which obviously will mean he'll lose another click, taking him down to his last click. Uh, which I was very happy with, because at that point, unless he's got the inside job in hand, he cannot get into uh, that remote server. He's going to Parasite the Enigma, which I'm more than happy with, and in fact that is the reason why it is an Enigma, rather than a Quandary. And I will score the Astro. Thank you very much, good sir. So, scored Astro, turn three. That's not too bad, really, is it? That is not too bad at all. All these custom tokens everywhere making it as thoroughly complicated for you, the viewer, to view these things as possible. But there we are. We like to make things difficult. Looks like he's drawn up into security testing there. Again, there's no doubt that security testing is incredibly strong against the NEH. But, do you have the time is the question you really should be asking. Uh, economy never really in short supply against the NEH. It should be relatively easy to go through, see the cards you need. He will run R&D, see nothing, and he will install that security testing there. And we'll... Uh, Past the turn, I believe. Oh, he's got two clicks left. I don't think it's anything else yet. I'm not sure if he drew first click. I think he did. I think he drew first click, uh, ran, played security testing. He's going to draw last click. And I will draw up and see an Eli, which I'm probably going to put there on HQ to stop the account siphons as much as feasibly possible. Um, Although, again, obviously you can keep top decking R&D and, and really cause me aggravation. I'm going to install, draw myself a card. And uh, I really want to see something like a wraparound here. I'm not sure what that is. It might be what a might be a wraparound, which I'll install over R&D. So he'll gain his daily cast money. Uh, I think he's got an HQ interface there in hand, which is in, don't, you don't see very often these days with legwork. Very much a thing. He will run HQ, and he'll see another sweep sweep. He's going to have a look at the outer remote, and I think it's the right call. You do have to check and make sure that you're not trying to do be a little bit cheeky and sneak an agenda out, though there's very little reason to uh, once you have a scored Astro on the board. Um, generally you don't score agendas in remotes unless you're confident you can get the Astro out. 
as in this case I have been. He's going to force activation orders on HQ. He really wants to see what what is there, and he will indeed see that it is a wraparound, um, which is fine. I didn't want to res it. Obviously, you want to kind of try and leave it off for the very vital runs as much as you possibly can. I think I've just drawn up into an NAPD contract there, uh, which is fine. I'm going to sweep sweep for three, I believe, which is also fine. I'm going to install, and I believe I am going to advance. So I'm going to install the NAPD and advance it. Um, this is undoubtedly going to give problems. It's going to cause issues and aggravations. Uh, he doesn't know what the ice is. The question is, does he go in and take it and score it? If not, I'm quite happy to leave it there and score it myself. And uh, At this stage, it really is not that big a deal. So he will uh, account side for me after having played a Corroda. Uh, I was just checking to make sure I didn't have a Sansa on the board to advance, uh, to res. I don't. So he will drain me of 5, taking himself 10 and 2 tags. And he's going to clear those tags, one with crash base, and one the old-fashioned way. So I'm on 3 credits, which is enough to score another agenda. I think I may have drawn up into a Beal there, actually, but I don't really want to use my Astro token on a Beal. Um, with only 2 points scored, I'm going to... Use Jackson, see a breaking news, and another NAPD contract. Since so this, I'm going to point. I'm going to do it again, um, so I can start ditching agendas out of hand, because that is a little bit too much now. Too many agendas, and I'm going to go again, and uh, just play it safe and start ditching an agenda or two, so that I don't have them build up in hand against the kings of multi-access and HQ. And again, given that he's got the uh, HQ interface there in hand as well, it's not a bad shout. So he will uh, use the, his security testing to run archives. He will run HQ, and he will see nothing, because I've pretty much ditched all the agendas out of hand. I think there's only the breaking news in hand now. Uh, he will run Jackson, and he will trash it. Oh, no, sorry, I'll, I'll trigger it and put the three agendas back in. So shuffle back the NAPD contract that I had in hand out. Definitely did not want those to stick around. Leave them in R&D for the time being, please. He's going to have a quick shuffle himself. And a mandatory draw, see another Jackson Howard. <laughs> so he's, a, he's got an emergency shutdown there. There's very few good emergency shutdown targets uh, when playing against NEH. I do have one toll booth in this deck just for those occasions where I can use it to hit quite hard. Very rare that I'd res it against a, a criminal player, I, I would suggest. Uh, much better when they're just starting to peter out on economy and you can lock them down or make them go and find a fem, because obviously this doesn't have much in the way of sentry ice. He will run, and uh, I'm not going to res, I'm going to let him have the NAPD if he wants it, but he's not going to take it. So here's the interesting question we posed in the first round, which is, do you steal the NAPDs or not? Do you leave them? What do you do? It's a really difficult situation. You know, I had the money to take it there. It's got the economy engine to be able to sustain it. It's just a question of, you know, do you really need it? I think he's debating here whether to trash the Jackson Howard. I'm certainly not going to use it at this stage. He will trash the three. And... Uh, He's going to run R&D. Uh, I think that, that may be the toll booth there, actually, on top of R&D. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'll take the credit. He will access, and uh, he'll see nothing. So a little bit unfortunate on his R&D accesses. He certainly had enough. Oh, no, there's the toll booth. I tell a lie. So I'm not sure. It might be a Lotus field on top of R&D. It wouldn't surprise me. I'm going to install that Jackson, I believe, and draw another card. Seen lots of ice and not a lot to do with it, but I will hedge fund, which is quite nice, for another four credits. I forgot my uh, pad campaign money there, just to clarify why I took extra. And I'm going to take another credit. And uh, Sorry, I'm going to then res marked counts and put three on marked counts instead. So I put the three over there, change it up for three, just to make even matters more confusing. Just to remind you again, greens are ones, oranges are threes, and blues are twos. Right, so he's got another four activation orders in hand, but he's going to go run on HQ, and he will see a breaking news, which is a little bit annoying. It could have been good to score that. I probably would have scored it next turn, uh, taking me to three or two more agendas with one on the board to score potentially, and I'm just happy to leave that at the time for the time being. 
So uh, I'll take my money for marked accounts and for pad campaign. I'll draw, and I'll top deck that Astro, and she'll never guess what I do with it. I'm going to score that. But do I score it with another Astro, or do I go for the biotic labour? So this is the, the choice that I'm in at the moment. Uh, it's a question of, do I spend the extra cash and get two Astro tokens, or do I just settle for the one? And... Uh, Pretty sure here I go for the uh, scoring the astro with a beat with the uh, the botic labour, so that I have two astro tokens on the board, and it should allow me to see out the game quite comfortably. It means that I can fast advance all the other agendas I need. So I'll pay my four, install, drawing myself a card, seeing another botic labour, which is pretty fantastic. Although I'm not going to need it at this stage, and then advance three times and score another astro. Uh, giving myself now a lovely comfortable cushion. I've got a pad campaign res, I've got a marked accounts res, I've still got six credits there on the board and two Astra tokens with, although my service may be relatively porous now, all I have to do is uh, find the key card. So that's fine, I'm going to res the Eli uh, for three. I've got another two credits coming on the board for me next turn anyway, so that's fine. Uh, and if he does go through and pay four for it, which I don't think he oh, can, so he can afford it, he's going to pay four. Uh, he'll go through, pay for the pad campaign, uh, the pop-up window, sorry. I think he clicked actually there through, he clicked through the Eli, paid for the, the pad, and uh, then took a credit. I think at this stage I probably should have scored the NAPD contract. Um, yeah, I'm not sure necessarily whether I, uh, yeah, I think I probably should have scored the NAPD. But then he's only on one point, so there's... N there's not a huge amount of reason not to, and I just obviously drew drew there into a uh, into a beal, so uh, I'll score that instead. So that's why I didn't score the NAPD. So now he has to score the NAPD contracts. Um, he hasn't got a choice. I'm not going to res that. I think it's a wrap around. Uh, he will score the NAPD and pay four credits for it. And he didn't have a lot of choice there, unfortunately. He really was stuck between rock and a hard place. And here he has to prevent another agenda being scored. So he will play his HQ in space. He will run through on HQ, give me a credit for the pop-up window. He'll pay one for the wraparound, and he will access a toll booth and an Eli. Not what he needed, but I don't think there's any agendas in hand there anyway. <laughs> but I can certainly understand why he did it. He kind of has to stop the top deck here. Uh, otherwise, he's in a bit of bother. So he'll take some money and then pass the turn, at which point I gain two for my assets. I'll draw and I think see a San San, which isn't much good uh, at this stage. So I'll in play the Astro, I'll see another piece of ice, which is a Lotus Field, uh, which would be tempting to play on R&D. I think that's why I scooted my credits over there, because that's exactly what my first thought was. Uh, I've installed something over HQ there, I'm not sure what, not the Lotus Field I don't think. And I've put three on marked accounts again, because I'm just waiting for the agenda now at this point. He has to keep locking me down on, in R&D. And so, what I've done here, I, I think my my logic, uh, my psychology in this was to try and act like I'd just drawn up into the winning agenda. Um, so that he had to put pressure on HQ over putting pressure over R&D, where I'm hoping to top deck the winning agenda. Um, so I put another piece of ice there on HQ rather than on R&D just to indicate that I had the winning agenda in hand, which one I don't. Um, I absolutely don't have the winning agenda in hand. And uh, I'm just hoping, because he's not exactly flush with money at the moment, I'm hoping to cause him a little bit of uh, a little bit of, of decision making. So there he sees the Eli, uh, which he'll pay for to break, uh, giving me another credit there for the pop-up window, and another credit to break through the wraparound, and he'll see two cards. And he'll look and see another toll booth, and he'll see a Bartic Labour. So again, there weren't any agendas in hand there, um, and that's exactly the intention. I just want to soak up his money, try and stop him from locking me down on R&D, so that I can top deck the winning agenda, because I've got plenty of money with the marked accounts and the pad campaign out, certainly more than enough to score out with the, with the Astro token. And uh, I'm just waiting at this stage. He's going to emergency shut down the Eli, which is fine. Uh, he's going to run 
HQ. I'm not going to res the Eli. I've got no agendas in hand at that stage. I, I might, mission accomplished, so to speak. Uh, he'll run. He'll see an Eli. He'll see a Lotus Field, and I think he now he knows he's seen pretty much all the cards in my hand. So I'll gain my two for the uh, assets that are down. I'll draw and see a fast track. And uh, I think I've got the Bartic Labour in hand. Can I afford it? I think so. So I fast track. Uh, I look for either an Astro. Uh, play the Biotic. I've got two credits and an Astro token, and I take the game and win. So uh, I don't bother going in to find it because we're all pretty clear on uh, what the play was there. And uh, that's NEH for you folks. It's a little bit silly. And uh, stop even the fast runners, uh, i.e., Andy, from uh, ever really getting into the game. Um, three points scored, but obviously two of those were just out in the open, uh, waiting for him to score them in a way, and any deck where you want him to score an agenda point is an interesting one to say the least. So that's 3-0, to zero, and uh, I go into the next game hoping to uh, carry on a perfect record.